Welcome to a second video on polar equations of conic sections. In this video we'll take a look at graphing an ellipse. But let's start with a quick review. If we have a polar equation in either of these two forms, we'll have a conic section with eccentricity E. And if it's in this form with cosine theta, we have a vertical directrix at x equals plus or minus D. And if the equation has sine theta in it, we'll have a horizontal directrix y equals plus or minus d. For more details about this, you may want to take a look at part one, but in this video we're going to take a look at another example. Here we have r equals eight divided by the quantity four plus two sine theta. Our first step is to make sure that our denominator is in the form of one plus or minus e sine theta. So we want this four to be a one, so we'll divide everything on the right side by positive four. Let's go ahead and simplify this. So we'll have two divided by one plus one half sine theta. Okay, so in this form we can gather some important information. The first thing we should notice is the coefficient of sine theta is equal to one-half. So eccentricity is equal to one-half. So we have an ellipse. Notice the numerator is e times d. So e times d is equal to positive two. But we know e is equal to one-half, so we have one-half times d is equal to two. Well, that tells us that d is equal to four. And since the equation contains plus e sine theta, we have a horizontal directrix at y equals positive four. Let's go ahead and take this information onto the next screen and start to graph our ellipse. Let's start by graphing our directrix at y equals four. would be somewhere in here. Now I mentioned in the previous video that remember on the unit circle sine theta is equal to y. And that helps me remember that since this equation contains sine theta, the major axis of this ellipse will be along the y axis here. So the ellipse will look something like this where one focus is at the pole. Now the reason I find that helpful is we can find the endpoints of the major axis by selecting theta equal to pi over two and three pi over two. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we can use either the original form or the simplified form to determine the radius. Let's go ahead and just use the original form. So when theta is pi over two, we'll have sine of pi over two, which is equal to one. So r is going to equal eight divided by four plus two, or eight divided by six, which is equal to four thirds. And then when theta is three pi over two, the sine of three pi over two is going to equal negative one. So we'll have eight divided by four plus negative two, or eight divided by two which is equal to four. Let's go ahead and plot these two points, which are the endpoints of the major axis. So we have pi over two, four thirds, somewhere in here, and three pi over two, four, would be here. Again, these are the endpoints of the major axis. And don't forget, we have a focus at the pole. Let's go ahead and pick theta equal to zero radians and also pi radians. When theta is equal to zero, since sine zero is zero, we'd have eight divided by four, which is two. That would be this point here. And then the sine of pi would also be zero, so we'd have two again. So we'd be right here. Remember the center of this ellipse would be the midpoint of this major axis. Since the major axis is four units plus four thirds units long, we can take this entire length and divide by two to find the center 
of the major axis to find the center of this ellipse. Let's go ahead and do that. 4 plus 4 thirds divided by 2 would help us find the location of the center of this ellipse. Well, 4 is the same as 12 thirds, so this is 16 thirds divided by 2, which is the same as times 1 half. This simplifies nicely. So the center of this ellipse is 8 thirds units from either end of this major axis. Well, this is 4 thirds, so the center would be somewhere in here, 8 thirds units from the two endpoints of the major axis. 8 thirds would also be the value of A. And remember the distance from the center to the focus is equal to C. And since this is 8 thirds and this is 4 thirds, C would also equal 4 thirds. Now the reason this is important is remember on an ellipse, A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. So we can use this information to determine the endpoints of the minor axis. Let's go ahead and do that on the next screen. Since we have an ellipse, we know that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. So we have 8 thirds squared equals b squared plus 4 thirds squared. So we have 64 ninths must equal b squared plus 16 ninths. Go ahead and solve for b squared. Take the square root of both sides. Let's go ahead and get a decimal approximation here. B is approximately equal to 2.3. Now the reason that's so important is starting at the center, we can go left and right approximately 2.3 units to find the endpoints of the minor axis. and That'll help us form a nice ellipse. Since we're traveling to the right 2.3 units, let's go out here about 2.3 units and then over to here, and then the same thing on the other side. Somewhere in here, out 2.3 units. And now we can form a nice ellipse. It would look something like this. Now if we wanted to find the other focus, remember the distance from here to here was 4 thirds units. So we could go up 4 thirds units from this vertex here to somewhere in here. So we have the first focus and the second focus here. Here's a computer generated graph of the one that we just made. And just to review, here are the key components that relate A, B, and C when we're graphing an ellipse. And we also use the fact that A squared is always equal to b squared plus c squared when we have an ellipse. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Next we'll take a look at graphing a hyperbola.